So we are already approaching the end of the festival and the beginning of the Driving the Human journey. It is now a great pleasure to welcome the main project partners into our live stream. Yes, big welcome to Jan Buhlen, Freo Meyer, Martina Schraudner and Peter Weibel. And it is so great to have you with us for this concluding moment. As mentioned before, the Driving the Human Festival is kicking off the larger Driving the Human project, which will run from 2020 to 2023 inviting artists, scientists, and designers to imagine and build sustainable futures together. And we want to start uh, our concluding round with a look back and maybe a, a kind of a summary from all each and every one of you by introducing you also. And I would like to start with Jan, Jan Bulen. Uh, you are a curator of design, architecture, and contemporary art. And next to bringing to being the artistic director of the Atelier Luma, you are also the director of the Karlsruhe University of Arts and Design, one of the four partner institutions of Driving the Human. What is your main takeaway from these past three days? <laughs> oh, the, the, the question um, is, um, is too difficult to answer. Like, um, but nevertheless, I uh there is not one thing there is really like there was a a kind of attitude that i observed due uh, from really from the beginning almost from hans ulrich obrist his uh, uh it's urgent uh manifest um to uh, later today um in the panels um on access and so on where that breaking walls between different disciplines, um, uh, bringing different people together, uh, letting them discuss, um, uh, creating uh, ecosystems, uh, let them contribute, uh, let them collaborate in different ways uh, together. This is what I saw as more as an, an overall attitude where that theory, um, uh, design uh, artistic practices all mingled together. If it was, if people were talking about AI, they say, yeah, I'm a, a visual artist, uh, but um, that's why I look different to AI. So uh, I talk with programmers, I look to data sets, and um, I want to discuss this with philosophers. So this kind of attitude of um, looking to problems and issues with many perspectives, um, that was for me the uh, the attitude that uh, came back. And these kind of um, very small initiatives that continuously um, could emphasize and could um, be enlarged, maybe scaled up um, through uh, collaborations uh, and could become like the alternatives that we could find in the in the festival, and uh, yeah, that was for me the the main takeaway. Next up, we have Frio Meyer. You're the founder and artistic director of Forecast, an international mentorship program based in Berlin. Forecast transcends disciplines in geographical locations to connect cultural practitioners with renewed mentors. And the question also to you: What are you taking away from this festival for the larger project? Before I answer that question, I'd like to say that I'm very happy about how this opening festival evolved and deeply grateful to you, Jan Bull and Peter Weibel and your incredible teams at the ZKM and the University of Arts and Design and, and to the coordinating team around Vera Sacchetti and Nicola Jetze at answering your question. Um, I would say I found very remarkable how clearly many panelists, many contributors formulated an aim of uh, practical and verifiable concepts, uh, be it in John Thakras quoting those uh, Islands of Coherence by Ilya Prigozhin, or uh, Isabel Stenger's idea of catalysis, which also uh, was connected of, uh, to her idea of verifiable concepts and Sarat Maharaj's notion of knowledge as a series of practices. And um, yeah, I think that is, is basically what we wanted to, to start with this festival to uh, build a nourishing ground for these seven prototypical production processes uh, that will start next year and that will hopefully evolve into something verifiable, experienceable and um, build seven first steps towards possible futures, I would say. All right, thank you very much. 
Martina Schrautner. You are on the board of directors of the German Academy of Science and Engineering, ACATEC. And the work that you do there is very much already focused on bringing different experts together, such as artists, scientists, but also policymakers, which I find very interesting. With your expertise in questions of the future of technology, science and technology policy, what did you think of the past three days? And is there something in particular that you are taking away from this festival? Yeah, first of all, I want to thank you also for this wonderful festival. Uh, this was really impressive and I'm, I'm still uh, <laughs> very much involved in especially two ideas I would like to mention. This, this picture of the bubble in science, in AI, which was mentioned this afternoon by Alexander, this is, is great because he described this AI Uh, by the computer scientists and also by uh, people from social sciences, which should merge to get uh, the next uh, step in science here. And this brings me very close to these information bubbles we have in social sciences, which also have to merge to come from the fake news to the fact news. And I think we need something like catalysators, which bring the energy into that this merging can happen. And I hope we get some ideas how this can happen. <laughs> and another thing, which is, I think from, from Friday already, there was, and I, sorry for that, I don't know who mentioned that. What picture do we use to describe the world which become even more complex every day? This brings me to another problem we see at the moment in the technology sphere, we have the clear description of the geosphere, the biosphere, biosphere as in the criti criti critical zone, for example, in this, uh, which is described as on Friday already, and uh, you can visit in Karlsruhe, but we also have a kind of technosphere, which is growing at the moment. And I think there are no principles in place. And there is a lot of um, yeah, thinking about this architecture of the technosphere, which is not done at the moment, but the physical, cyber physical systems are in place already now. And the information between people and subjects is growing every day, every minute, something like that. Mm -hmm. So, Lot, lots of food for thoughts, I would say. <laughs> Thank you. Peter Weibel, you're the CEO of the ZKM, Center for Arts and Media in the UNESCO City of Media Arts Karlsruhe. In your many exhibitions, you bring arts, science and technology together, provoking constructive and productive frictions between different forms of knowledge. And so the question also to you, what are you taking away from the last three days of this festival? Uh, it is always difficult, but I have to say first, all the sections have been very uh, delivering many good impulses, very innovative. But what I see, especially for ZCAM, yeah, I see a lot of interrelated, interconnected fields mentioned by different people. For example, Isabel Steger spoke about tools. Yeah? We have to reuse, redefine our use of tools. Yeah? So, and tools are a very important uh, section and field for ZCAM and for HFK, because we have to develop tools and we have to learn tools to students. And she said more or less, uh, maybe the tools they have now available are not good enough to solve our problems. So I can generalize, I can say what we, we have to, what we have as problem is that human beings have created problems they cannot solve evidently. Yeah? So we come back to the problem of the system. Yeah? Wolf said wonderfully, the system is a sickness. Sick. Yeah? Yeah? The system is sick. This is one of the subjects we discuss a lot with Jan Bullen, yeah? because when the system is sick, then democracy is in danger. Yeah? And one of the projects we have in mind, Jan Bullen, Halfke and me, is how can we empower people, how can we empower democracy, and etc. cetera. Yeah? And actually, about tools, there's one special section, which was debated very, very precisely, Data, how can we use data as tools like Parapasi with network thinking? We have normally, we have visual thinking, we have all kinds of thinkings. Now we learn a new category 
of thinking, which is machine thinking and network thinking. No? And us is good tools. And I can only say, who is afraid of machine language? Yeah? And who is afraid of new codes? We have to remember, in philosophy, for 2,000 years, people are discussing what is language, what are words, what is the relation of words to reality? Huh? What is, how can we formulate truth with words? How can we influence reality by words? We discussed this for 2,000 years. Now we are just at the beginning to discuss the same problem with data. Huh? So I can predict the question, how do data function? How will data influence our thinking? How will data influence our encounter with reality? It will take another 1,000 years. Huh? We are just at the beginning. Huh? So I would say, uh, from the system to tools, to data, to machines, we have found, strange enough, a coherent field of problems which have been articulated very clear, as you said, uh, Freo. It was a very clear language. And I thank you all the participants for these good ideas, but also for the clear formulation of the ideas and the problems. Lovely. Thank you uh, to all of you for these answers. And actually, um, there was already a lot of chat on Telegram. There is such a vital uh, uh, community there. Uh, there are so many people are living there and sharing thoughts um, and, and sharing already ideas. So um, what are the next steps in the Driving the Human project for you? And maybe, I don't know who wants to answer this question first. <laughs> I can maybe. start and then, oh, sorry. Yeah. Leo? Uh, okay. So, so I would say uh, basically in the upcoming weeks, uh, the four lead institutions will gather the thoughts and suggestions that have come up in the, the opening festival. And then we will melt them into a sharpened sequence of questions that will then form the call for proposals in February. Mm -hmm. Jan, do you want to add anything? Yeah, I want to add something and uh, Peter was already uh, referring to it. Uh, we want, uh, we think that the people that uh, um, uh, will participate in uh, driving the human, uh, that they also should get the chance and the access to new tools, uh, tools that are uh, maybe different. Um, and we want to develop together HFG and ZKM tools for uh, researchers uh, to find, not to search maybe, but really to find. Everything is there, out there, and we want to break maybe the current system um, of uh, searching. So that is a bit our aim, and together with uh, the students, guest professors, uh, programmers in the ZKM and so on, we want to make this uh, finding machine, this intelligent uh, way of uh, bringing uh, different fields of knowledge together in order to support um, the researchers that will build the prototypes. And of course, we will hope uh, that we can participate and critically question these prototypes that we will build for possible futures um, uh, with the students, with the guest professors and all the people that will be involved. Uh, that is our aim, at least of 5G and ZKM. Yeah. I think this is a good good moment to bring Akatech into also, because uh, in the academia we have natural scientists, scientists from more or less every field of engineering. So there is a great chance for collaboration and we did this already during the Housing the Human project. So the project which ended last year, and I was really proud that uh, homeschool was a project mentioned this afternoon already, this project from Simone Niki. This was also within the Housing the Human project, uh, and another project was in a close, uh, uh, yeah, close uh, work together with uh, the Max Planck Institute in Golm. Uh, they worked about, uh, I think, microbes uh, using waste mm. to produce new forms and new kitchen tools. So I think this. This is really a good way to collaborate. And I think this is something which should go on in the Driving the Human project. I just wanted to say that over the last couple of days, I had also quite a lot of chances to hang out with people in the waiting rooms before sessions. And there is just a lot of interest and excitement about this project because, frankly, there is not that much funding that has like the duration of three years. It is so open mm. in scope. And um, 
I think this is really exciting and I hope that that will translate into the next stage um, of the project and I'm sure it will do. So with that in mind, um, I just want to mention that in February 2021, the jury and the advisory board of the Driving the Human project will choose 21 projects from the pool of first ideas or first applications. Mm. Yes. And I would like to ask you, what is your message or advice to people who want to participate in the open call and or to phrase it differently, what do you hope for? Oh, for me, it's really um, uh, uh, how can uh, design artistic practices, um, technology, how can we contribute to a society uh, a democracy and an economy uh, that is, um, yeah, that needs alternatives, uh, that is uh, looking for alternatives. And there, I think um, we cannot leave uh, politics to the politicians and economy to the economists. Uh, AFG and ZKM really want to think how can we push the boundaries further and uh, um, I think there uh, with bringing several uh, disciplines together in groups and uh, maybe in collectives um, and being open also from the participants to uh, for an open process not only coming with a, a very defined uh, thing uh, would uh, help us as jury to to get inspired and to uh, to start a dialogue a process rather than focusing on a product um, it should be a thing that can evolve over the, the three years. Mm -hmm. I think bringing together um, social and technological innovations would be one way to bring something in a, in a growing process. I'm looking forward to students. My hope is for an open call that people will come to us who help us as institutions because normally institutions uh, in some abound in many ways. Yeah? And therefore, most institutions uh, are not solving the problem, they are the problem. Yeah? Most institutions are part of the system, they are sick. And I hope that we say uh, people who come because of our open call will help us to build institutions, become institutions who can solve problems. And to give an example, besides what kind of people I'm expecting, there was a young researcher called Mr. Hell. And he had, normally you have the idea that what you see, what's the end of what you see is the end of, of, is the end of light. Yeah? So when you develop a microscope, you cannot expect that the microscopes exist more than the end of boundary of light. But he had an idea that he could invent a microscope who goes beyond the boundary of the light. And then the Sherman institution said, if you're the only one who has the idea, it must be a wrong idea. Yeah? Then they moved to Finland. Yeah? And the film people say, if you are the only one who said it, it must be a very good idea. And these people I'm looking for, and I can swear you, said Jan Pullen and me and our institution are the one who will say, you have the only one who has the idea, so it's a good idea. We will support you. Yes. Yes, Jan. I agree. <laughs> I, I can I follow up on that. I have another question. Um, I guess throughout the festival, there was a lot of commitment to the idea of. Yeah, I'm sorry. I had forgotten the end of the story. Mr. Hell later become, became the Nobel Prize uh, for the discovery exactly. of his microscope. Yeah. Exactly. He became the Nobel Prize. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is an end to a story, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. What I wanted to ask was, um, there was like a lot of commitment to the idea of working across disciplines over the last couple of yeah. days. But I think, as you all know, that is actually quite difficult to achieve because of the different institutions and regimes that people work in financially mm. and otherwise. And, um, but it's also one really exciting thing about this project. And we just wondered, um, do you expect all applications to be collaborations between different disciplines? And how do you imagine that to take shape within the program? Well, I think we are a bit open for that. Eh? Uh, that is, um, Freo, maybe. Yeah, I'm. I mean, uh, I I think that probably forecast will kind of provide a blueprint for this uh, open call and uh, what we have learned at the forecast platform of the course of five editions so far that is that we it's not necessary not helpful to predefine anything actually it it, it may appear a bit unused uh, un unusual or. Uh, 
maybe even surprising to some applicants that we will not uh, distribute tasks or mottos or topics or so, but rather ask questions in a very curious and maybe also provocative way. So uh, I <coughs> think we should not predefine any kind of approach, structure, uh, practice, let alone discipline. We never use that term at all. So um, I think anybody who has uh, something in their, on their mind or some ambition that they want to follow, um, the, the more radical and the clearer it is, the better, I would say. All right. Um, so we are about to close this session and uh, move on to the like behind the scenes thank you uh, mode. Uh, before doing that, I just wanted to ask, is there anything you still wanted to say that kind of has not been said or has not been heard yet? I would only like, would like to thank our partners, uh, Freya Meyer, Schaldner and Jan Bullen for this great adventure and for this great mission we have accomplished. And thank you very well. Thank you. It was a great, great festival. Thank you so much, all the participants and especially our partner. And thank you, the whole team that worked for weeks and months uh, to make this happen. Thank you yep. very much, all yep. of you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. That was the perfect transition to the fact that we are now going to open a big round of thank you. First of all, we are going to see Vera Sacchetti, whom we've already met uh, during the last session. She has been, she is the coordinator of the Driving the Human program. And uh, maybe she wants to add some more details before opening uh, the round. So I will uh, just ask uh, Peter, who is right now the technical host of this uh, session. Not you, Peter Weibel, I'm sorry, but Peter Miller <laughs> in the video studio. <laughs> Peter, can you uh, take us to Vera Sacchetti right now? Now, maybe? Hi, hey everybody. Now you can hear me. I'm Vera Sacchetti. You've seen me before. I'm program coordinator of Driving the Human, and I'm very happy to be talking to you at the conclusion of this festival. Thank you so much, Barbara and Julian for moderating this conclusion. And thank you so much to our partners for their insights. We are excited about the next steps of the project. And if Moritz would be so kind as to share the timeline of the project again, I would just like to remind you that as our partners mentioned, and as Julian and Barbara mentioned, the next step after the opening festival is the open call. But the opening festival was absolutely a huge milestone in this process because it is thanks to the opening festival that we have the kind of collective thinking that we were aiming for that will help us to delineate the guidelines that will structure and orient the research that Driving the Human wants to take uh, as part of, its, of this initiative for the next uh, years of the project. So the opening festival is a crucial milestone and the start of everything. Um, and the next step, as was already previously mentioned, will be our open call, which will be announced in February next year. And we hope to be able to receive your ideas, your suggestions, your provocations, your visions for tools uh, that will shape the next steps of the project. Then we will have the selection of 21 ideas progressively selected to seven, and these seven will then be engineered and worked on for the duration of one year and then presented as prototypes at the end of 22. 